What a crazy couple of weeks, y'all. I can't even begin to catch you up on all of it, but I'm gonna try. What's up, y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth, and you're watching Real Talk with Rach. A week ago, I was in Dallas. The week before that, I didn't know how I was gonna get to Dallas or get back from Dallas or where I was gonna stay in Dallas, or how I was gonna pay for it. God provided for all of those things. And then, this whole week back from Dallas, back in Studio City, has been this incredibly crazy week of spiritual and emotional transition from all that. I think probably a lot of you are going through transitions of one type or another, and they're not always easy to navigate. So, let's talk about it. I'm sure most of you have heard of or referred to stages of life as seasons before. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says that there's a season for everything. There's a time for everything. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to mourn, and a time to rejoice, and basically everything else in between. So I highly recommend checking that out, but I want to talk about what happens in between those seasons. Personally, I'm about to or I just stepped into a new season of life. And to explain that, I've been doing this purposefully homeless journey for now almost eight months. June 1st will be eight months of living by faith, going wherever the Holy Spirit leads me to do whatever God wants me to do, to encourage whoever he wants me to encourage, or serve whoever he wants me to serve. And it's been incredible, but I also get the sense that it's either going to be over soon or it is over and I'm just transitioning to something new. All of this is an incredibly difficult change. How many times do you feel like the second you start to get into a routine and you get kind of comfortable or at least used to, if not comfortable, how things are going when suddenly everything changes? First of all, I think God does that to keep us dependent on him, keep us looking to him instead of getting too complacent with the status quo. But I also think that it's to teach us a lot through the transition. And I think it's really, really natural. It happens to probably all of us, at least those of us who are following the way of love. I love that phrase. It's the first verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and it's actually leading into a whole chapter on spiritual gifts. But I love the way it opens up. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. And I love that because in 1 John, it says that God is love. God is love personified. And all throughout the New Testament, when Jesus says, follow me, if Jesus is the son of God and God made flesh to live among us, if Jesus is God and God is love, then 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 is saying the same thing that Jesus said all throughout the New Testament when he said, follow me. Follow the way of love. Also interesting to note in the book of Acts, the first group of Jesus disciples that followed the apostles who were starting church groups or essentially home groups wherever they went, they called themselves the way. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, Christians were actually called the way before they were called Christians. And if I'm not mistaken again, Christian simply means little Christ-like one. So don't get it twisted. Christian is not a religious title. Christian is a privilege for those who actually live out the example that Christ set for us while he was walking the earth. But to transition back into transitions, I just want to share a little bit about what is happening personally while I'm transitioning. The last episode of Real Talk with Rach that I did before Dallas was on The Secret Place. The Secret Place is wherever you go to be alone with God so that you can cultivate that relationship how many of you know that number one, God is real. Number two, even though you can't see him, he's a real person and you have to cultivate relationship with him just like you would any other human. So I was talking about the secret place because that's where we need to start. That's where this all begins. You surrender your life to Jesus because he's God, because he gave his life so that you could have life. The Bible says we were dead in our sins, in our transgressions. So Jesus laid down his life. Jesus died to be the substitute for us. Because of his death and resurrection, we could live in him. 
if it weren't for Jesus, we'd still be dead men walking. Yeah, kind of like zombies. <laughs> but when we surrender our life to Jesus, and again, I will reiterate this a million times, when you become a Christian, you're not just saying a prayer to swipe the get me into heaven free card. <laughs> no, you're literally giving your life, your dead life to Jesus so that you can reap the benefit of his perfect life and gain the resurrection power. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead will then live in you so that you can be a little Christ-like one and set the example that Jesus set for everyone in your sphere of influence and love the way he loves, only made possible because his spirit is living in you. So, man, I need a lot of transitions to talk about transition. Anyway, I was talking to you about the secret place right before I went to Dallas with a one-way ticket and one night at an Airbnb without knowing where I would stay the following four nights. Side note, knowing who God is in relationship via the secret place and the word of God is paramount to you knowing who you are and being confident and unshakable in your faith so that you can step out and risk in faith to do crazy things like this. That's the only way I was able to do this. But when I got to Dallas, every single need was met. I had transportation, food, places to stay, and I even had coffee and a cookie and all these little extras that were beyond what I needed. They were just extra because God is a God of abundance. And here's the cool part. Never once did I ask for any one of those things. I just asked for prayer. So all these things were met. I had this incredible time at the Upper Room Conference and it was a weekend of radical, supernatural, spiritual, personal, emotional shifting. And I know it wasn't just me. I know something shifted in the spirit that we were able to be a part of during that conference. After the conference, I came back to LA to face two weeks of living in this beautiful room <laughs> before I have to transition again. So I came back thinking that I was gonna be able to relax, see friends, get things done before I transitioned again. But little did I know, I was coming back into a transition and God knowing everything beforehand because he is a God outside of time, graciously allowed me this privacy and this space to process everything that I just went through. That my friends is a transition. Transitions happen when we know they're gonna happen and when we don't know they're gonna happen. And the unexpected transitions are where we can either fight what's happening spiritually, emotionally, or numb everything, or we can step into it and face it. And it's the same thing for anything unexpected, but especially transitions, to be able to recognize that we can't always just dive back into what was. To be able to recognize that God's changing you over time. You're growing up into the image of Christ, becoming more and more like him, knowing that every day should be a transition. And partly this is dependent on the way God moves in our lives. And it's partly dependent on you, just as it's partly dependent on me to step into this transition and allow God to do what he's gonna do in this process of processing what happened last week. Practically what that looks like is allowing yourself the grace to know that you're gonna be needing to take a little extra time alone with God in the secret place to ask him to reveal what's going on in your heart. It's gonna mean being really aware that we are more vulnerable than usual to pretty much everything, <laughs> especially spiritual attack. Our enemy uses our weakest moments, just like a lion going after the weakest buffalo. Our enemy will use our weakest moments to tempt us, bring up old stuff, and especially when we're stepping into understanding who we are as sons and daughters of the living God, don't even think for a second that you're not gonna get attacked with old stuff that you used to struggle with. Or maybe it's something that you still struggle with, but you've recently realized that that's not who you are anymore and it has no power over you. Those are the moments when the enemy is gonna try to bring all artillery against you. <laughs> He's gonna bring out the big guns and he is gonna try anything to get you to slip back into the mindset that no, I'm just this, I just can't get over this, this is a habit and it's never gonna, it's just who I am. No, what you do is not who you are. 
who you are, if you're a Christian, little Christ-like one, is an image bearer, an ambassador of God. You bear the image and likeness of Jesus. And just like little baby humans look like their parents, you look like your daddy in heaven and he has put a spirit inside you. So there's gonna be a new light in your eyes where people will recognize him. You will start to recognize him when you look in the mirror because it's not you that this whole thing is about anyway. It's about him. He is the beautiful one. He is the perfect one. He is the one that you now reflect. It's about understanding who you are, your new identity. It's about understanding your value because you're his because you're his. He gave his life to buy you back, to get you back into his family. These transitions are gonna happen for the rest of our lives, but how you approach them changes everything. It changes everything, y'all. If you are in a transition and you look at it with fear and it causes you to turn back to what you used to turn to when things got hard, that is different for everybody, but me in the past, I turned to alcohol, to men and all these things. I used to turn to them when things got uncomfortable so that I didn't have to face what was uncomfortable. Truth is, you're always gonna face something uncomfortable. Whether or not you numb it, you're still going through it. But sometimes when you choose to numb rather than step into, you stall the progress and you end up getting stuck in discomfort for a whole lot longer. If something's uncomfortable, don't you wanna get through it? You can't go around it. You're either putting off the inevitable or you're moving through it and you're gonna become better through it. And he's walking you through it and he's leading you through it and he's already been through it. He goes ahead of you. He's outside of time. Y'all, take Jesus by the hand and walk through it. I promise you, as hard as it may be, it's gonna be really good. And the more you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the more you're gonna be able to recognize the old temptations for what they are. They're old, they're dead. You aren't who you were and you're gonna recognize the lies because you are staring truth and love straight in the face. So now nothing can deceive you because you know love. You're following the way of love. You're following Jesus. That means your eyes are fixed straight on him. Y'all, I don't wanna to get too mystical, but something that helps me really, really practically as a visual person is I will close my eyes and I will imagine the face of Jesus. I won't let myself think about anything else. I won't let myself imagine anything else. In fact, if I find myself being distracted, I will get my eyes back on that picture of Jesus. Going through the hardest things, that actually helps me because I actually have a visual to go to instead of relying on an ethereal idea, okay? So visualization actually helps a lot. But the most important thing I want you to get out of this is that we have a choice and that choice is how you're gonna go through the transition. Are you gonna use the transition as an excuse to fall back into old temptations, to live as the person who actually died? Or are you gonna live as that new creation, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith and trusting him for just one more step forward. Y'all, it's all about cultivating that relationship in the secret place. We talked last week with Dozy about shame and the difference between condemnation and conviction. Let conviction and love move you forward. One more personal example. This morning, I was having trouble fixing my eyes on Jesus. So I asked him if there was anything that I needed to repent of. And he brought up three things. That I'm not gonna share with you. That's between me and Jesus. But he brought up three things that weren't even necessarily bad things. So I asked him why, and he revealed to me what those three things were doing to me, how they were affecting me, how they were getting between my relationship with him, or how they had the potential to get in the way of my relationship with him. You see, sometimes he asks us to give him things that aren't bad yet because he loves us and he wants to spare us the trouble that would come from things that would get in the way in the future. So I repented of things that I haven't necessarily even done yet because I opened the door to things that could be detrimental to my relationship with Jesus. And that is the most important thing in this world, y'all. Your relationship with Jesus is number one. That's all you're gonna be doing in eternity is spending time with him. So why would you not want to get to know him and live in that freedom and resurrection power now? We are the kingdom. Let's bring the kingdom to earth here and now by living as Christ lived. He empowers you. It's him, his power lives in you. You are new. 
your identity is royalty and you are of greater worth than rubies because Jesus died to purchase you with his own blood. Y'all, you are so loved. You are so loved. You are so loved. Yeah, I'm gonna say that three times. So have a wonderful week. If you wanna support my ministry, there are links in the description box below and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much to my Patreon family. Y'all are so amazing and I thank Jesus for the provision. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you and I'll see you next time.